Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nikki Hall and I'm from Polka Doodles for those of you that don't know me um, and what I really want to do in this video today is I'm going to show you um, an overview of our latest collection called Love Always which is all about Valentine's Day but so much more than Valentine's. This whole release um, has been designed so it'll work we all year round and it isn't just for one day only of the year that's really important to us at polka doodles so i'm going to just show you um some of the printouts from the release so this is the whole release so i've just printed these out on my inkjet printer so we have fabulous papers so these are all printed on a4 but if you're in the us you can print them on uh eight and a half by eleven as well because these are actually sized to eight by eight although obviously because they're digital you can actually size them to whatever you want them to be a few more of something others so i'll do a quick flick for you these papers are stunning i've got them the wrong way around um they are high quality as you can see just as if you would actually get them in a paper pack this is meant to be a little lighter it's not the print gone wrong but you can see really lovely these this is all a pink and brown palette but really soft um these have actually come out quite bold on my printer um depending on your isn't that lovely lovely roses um depending on your printer they might come out lighter they might come out darker it's obviously down to your ink and you know how you print i love this one it's lots of little tiny little ditzy hearts on there and this one which is super cute but it's really lovely pink tones to this um and i think you're just gonna love it i love this one because you've got a combination of two different ones and i think that's it we're kind of background to the front now in the actual um collection so you're getting i think it's 18 different papers and um you then also get 15 digital stamps now i've only printed these out in color because it looks a little bit boring when they're in black and white i'm going to leave them there so i don't move them too much and you can really see them so these have actually printed really quite bright and bold but the pre-colored images are actually very soft i've printed these ones have come out on a laser printer so that's why these have come out quite bold um so this is called first day and really super cute and with these ones these are more illustrations than just a digital stamp so i mean that just looks fabulous quite um poignant for them at the moment with the tennis thing going on but look at these adorable little tennis rackets with a little heart in the middle and they're actually um they're hitting arrows backwards and forwards over the net not the tennis balls and look there's a little arrow in the ter tennis ball there's so much detail in these and this particular image was actually mr doodle's idea it was he sometimes comes up with the most amazing ideas this is one of my favorites which is um i love you cartloads and he's got his little cart there and he's wheeling off down the road with all his roses and the little butterflies in it that's one of my favorites this one um, this has come out quite blue, but it should actually be kind of a bit more of an aqua colour. On our laser printer, it doesn't do blues very well. They always go really, really blue. Um, but they're in a little boat, and I would love to know where they're going to sail to. We've got this one, which is Love Always, which is really cute. Again, sitting on a little hill. We've got, I think we've got some doubles here. Printed two of each out. So. And then we're on to the ones without. So those, those few actually have the backgrounds. These ones are just kind of on, on a normal clear background. So we have Cupid. Um, I only have eyes for you. And all of these titles, um, they actually also have the sentiments and the greetings in the kit that will match as well. So um, this is just going to work so well for you. So this one, which is oh, so cute, she's holding a little bear look at that yeah, hold on, it's a bit blurred when i go a bit too close um but that's called i just want to squeeze you and then we have i don't know what this one's called but he's holding a little box of chocolates with a heart and a ribbon and a little letter on there as well but you can see how you know although these have got hearts on they're not valentine's i never ever put anything that says valentine in the images um there might be an odd one like the cupid which is overtly valentine but these can all be used all year round i love these two him i love i love you this much or you know it can just be hey nice to meet you whatever you know they're just so cute as i say these images are coming out quite dark so they're a lot softer than this um one we're here with a little rose and then you've got one here holding um candy floss or if you're in the us uh, cotton candy on his little stick there and they're quite non-gender specific as well you know some of obviously she's a girl but you know even the ones where they've just got a t-shirt on it it doesn't have to necessarily be a boy um this is actually a double one so there's two images in one so if you wanted to and you had a graphics program you could split that one out as well um and i love that he's taking off with his balloons and that's it i think i've got through two of each um so there's 15 images in black and white and also in color 
and then I just want to show you quickly some of the sentiments. So you can see here, I only have eyes for you. Your love lifts me up, which is perfect for the ones with balloons. Um, Sail away with me for the little boat. You caught my heart. That one, she's got a little uh, butterfly net and she's been catching hearts. Um, you know, love you this much. I just want to squeeze you. Love is catching. Love is in the air. You're my number one. So you can, and there's even love you game set and match, which is perfect for the one with the uh, tennis as well. And there's some, there's some real fans of tennis. Um, love you bunches. Your sweetest candy. So you can see how all of these great sentiments all match every single... Um, every single digi and you can print these obviously as big or as small as you want to it's completely up to you i've got a little bit blurred there i don't know why i'll just let my camera catch up with me i think it's decided to autofocus so that's the actual release and what i'm going to do today i want to do some coloring um so um i have printed here i've had quite a lot of messages i actually did um a little poll in the facebook group asking you whether you preferred our old style images or whether you like the new style images so the new style if you look on the pre-coloured ones this is more of an illustration so i'm not actually including the the hard black outlines um so um let me know which you prefer i prefer these um but you know if you guys prefer the old way that we were doing it then fine we'll go back to the old way of doing it but i just love the look of this um so this is this has no lines on it and that's what we're going to do today i'm going to show you how to actually achieve this look and we're going to do it with watercolors today just because i love watercolors but you could be doing this with copics or pencils or whatever it is you want to do so i'm just going to move that out of the way now i have because i'm using watercolors i've printed this out on watercolor cardstock i've printed it onto Buckingford cardstock and I've actually done a video showing you how I've done this. So basically how I've got four images on a sheet. I've done a separate video, which um, I'm, I'm going to include for you. Um, and I'll do it separately. So it won't be part of this. It'll be uh, the next video on. But I'm actually showing you how to do this in Microsoft Word and within your print settings. Um, now, this is just printed normally on normal quality. So the whole thing about no lines colouring is that we don't want these lines. So how do we remove them? Well, it's really, really easy. And again, in that video, I'm going to show you how to do that. But can you see on here, I've actually printed this and it looks like there's nothing on on camera. It's not really picking much up, but um, it is actually there, as you can see. And I just printed this and changed the opacity or the transparency of the images before I printed them. Now, if you print in draft, you actually change the ink to about, uh, I would say about 50%. I printed these on my Canon inkjet printer. Um, and, you know, because I'm watercoloring, I don't want these lines because obviously inkjet ink is water-based. So if I put water on this, it's going to bleed. So if I just bring some water in, you know, it, it's going to bleed and the, I've had these sit in for quite a long time today and actually it's not too bad so one trick if you're going to do this technique and this is this is actually a good little tip for you so if you actually um, go over the image that's printed with some water don't like soak it soak it but you know and don't scrub it but if you just actually you could spritz it but i find going over with a paintbrush is actually better because i get a better coverage so if i actually go over this with water and then allow that to dry um it will kind of fix itself a little bit more so you kind of like almost color fix the ink so then when, once it's dry and you go back in to color you'll find that the ink doesn't smudge as much if at all um and that's actually a really good technique if you want to use distress inks as well so you know i often call with distress inks i absolutely love that look um but yeah that's that's just let it dry naturally or you could do it with a heat gun but i would let it dry naturally because it gives the the longer it's there the more it's going to set as far as i'm concerned so you can do that and do it that way or what we what you can do is do it this way and Basically, I know this is going to be difficult for you to see here, um, and it's quite bright here as well. 
me try and do it so that I need to try not to move it as well but I do have my outlines and the whole point of this is that we actually colour over these lines and make them disappear now what I'm going to do today the other thing I wanted to show you is what I'm actually going to use to colour with which are these Daniel Smith um, watercolour dot cards now that sounds like really weird a dot card what is that and what is this um, and basically what these are, I have done a previous video on these and I love these and Cassie who is on our design team and does lots of amazing videos for us on colouring, Cassie loves these too, we're both a bit addicted. Now what these are, Daniel Smith is one of the most coveted watercolour brands in, uh, and one of the uh, most coveted artists in watercolour um in the last sort of 10 years i would say and he brought out um a set of watercolors which basically have properties that a lot of others don't and everyone a lot of the fine artists absolutely love them and they go crazy for them but as a crafter they are a little bit expensive so you know and you buy a tube and the tube will probably last us a lifetime as a crafter now what Daniel did was he came up with this amazing idea that because these are so highly pigmented he he used to when he first started he used to do these little cards and this is watercolor card and it's actually got a, a dot or a blob of watercolor paint on and <clears throat> because they go so far he realized that actually if someone wanted um a low cost solution or you wanted to try them before you buy them you know because it's a huge investment he has about 70 80 colors i think now and you know when each one of those is like maybe like i don't know how much i think they're like at least 10 to 15 pounds per tube and it's only quite a small tube unless you're a pro proper professional artist that's watercoloring all the time that's a hefty investment you know, like, I, I can't afford to buy those. Well, I, I can, but I, I don't want to. There's a lot of things I want to spend my money on. So he decided this was a really good way to try them. And you will be able to use these for a really long time. I've already had these for two years. And you can see how much paint I've still got on these. You know, and there's always colours that you're not going to use. So all you do is so easy to use because all you do is you just wet them straight from the palette and what I did when I first did mine you see how these are all bleeding off that's because I wanted to actually see what the color was so um I haven't done that one there oh that's a yummy color green gold and so it means this is also your little swatch card but all you ever have to do this is your mixing palette because these will dry and you can come back to them and come back to them and come back to them and then look all you do oops I've got ink on me all you do is you just keep them like that they're all cut down like this this is how you receive them and then I just actually took them in my little box there and they're in my drawer I haven't used these for quite a while and I just instantly knew where they were and went back to them so there's this set which is the watercolor confetti which has got a lot of bright pinks and things in which is just gorgeous let me put my brush down before I drop ink everywhere. And then there's also the mineral marbles. And these ones, are don't discount these because these are slightly darker colours. But to be honest, you kind of need them both. This is my colour to a T. And you'll see in here, in the mineral ones, you've actually got quite a few pearlescent ones. And ones that are what we call granulated, which is where they take on uh, strange properties or they kind of can do, you can do some really cool techniques with them. So you've got browns and more of your earthy to tones in here, purples. These are amazing blues. They're fabulous. And what I love is there's also a lot of hints and tips and things on the back. And on some of them, it actually tells you where these come from. These are natural pig pigments. So this, this one, this actual pin, um, pigment comes from Brazil and Utah. Um, the next one is Alaska, Australia and Colorado and that's how um, in-depth he is about his colours and why they work so well and why they're so coveted. So um, that's what we're going to use. Um, so I'm going to pick out my colours. I'm going to need a pink, I'm going to need a bit of a brown and a lilac I think. Oh that's Rose of Ultramarine which is quite nice. Um, let me see, look at these ones. <gasps> they're amazing those ones are the ones that are a little bit more expensive as well um 
so let me see there's some more so you can see you get lots of different types in here and this is why you need to have a mix because i don't really want the metallic -y ones necessarily um today so i'm gonna pull out um the colors that i want i want kind of a gray that's a nice one kind of it's kind of like a, a gray blue that's a nice color um we've got french ultramarine ultramarine i'm gonna use that one and that one i think we've got lots of really nice browns and reds oh, too many to choose from right okay so let's get started this is going to go on forever so let me just get a bit organized in what i'm doing <clears throat> so i have my little paint pot here um and i'm just going to use for a mixing palette i'm just going to use an acrylic block we actually have these nice flat acrylic blocks which are perfect mixing blocks if you're not using them for your stamp so i'm going to just mix my colors on there and i'm going to color this image here so i'm going to keep that there i've got a really nice fine paintbrush um to use because it's quite a small image so um you know i want to be able to sort of get into what i'm doing put that there which color am i going to use most probably these ones so just kind of like arrange what you're going to do a little bit and then you can be quite tidy in what you're doing so i'm going to use this kyanite and what i do want to do i'm going to move my water so my water isn't going to get i'm not going to go like that and drip it across my work so i'm just going to wet these down and i've got some gold at the bottom of this palette which isn't a great start but okay so i'm really liking this blue appetite here and you can see you know on the paintbrush i'm sorry the um camera keeps focusing when i'm refocusing when i move i think come on go back thank you so you can see you need a tiny tiny amount so I'm just going to, oh, and I've got, bear with me, I can just see a little stray hair on my brush. I'm just going to cut that off because that's going to annoy me. Okay, so I am just going to, now it looks like it's quite dark. I'm just going to add some shadows to start off with. And I want some shadow around there and then i'm going to come in with my water and i'm going to paint that out and you can see how intense these actually are and don't be afraid to put a bit more water on if you need to And this is the great thing is that you know you can just paint and shade these in and then once it's wet I'm gonna just do his ears there all you need to really remember is just to go right up to the line and remember to go light because you can always add a little bit more and I'm just going to add a little tiny bit more around here Joe, I'm not keen on this brush I'm going to change my brush this brush has a bit of a, a weird end on it but I can scrub a bit more with it that one was a little bit soft So I'm going to fast forward some of these points
so thank you for joining me I hope you've loved um, this tutorial and I hope you'll have a go I've just noticed I've left my little heart uncolored which kind of needs to be pink and I'm gonna go in with this nice lovely duochrome pink here just to actually color that in and not leave it out um, but you can see that actually it's just very very therapeutic technique and it's it's lovely uh, it's so relaxing I actually find watercoloring more relaxing than working with um, alcohol markers um, because you don't need to consider quite so much about what the marker's doing and and the blending just kind of happens on its own accord so I find watercolouring a lot more forgiving um, I hope you like the way that I've actually mixed all my different markers in there as well to to kind of get what I want so you know it is forgiving and don't worry if you go wrong I've been using this one tissue all the way through to actually lift colour off if I've actually gone too heavy with it or whatever the only thing I would maybe change is I'd probably come back in and do some stronger sky now but I'm pretty happy with that and I like that so I'm gonna just cut that out and mount it on a card and put a sentiment on and that's it so thanks for joining me don't forget to actually um, check out the other tutorial where I actually show you about the printing just like the a few little printing options and also a few things that you can do in Word that will actually help you if you don't have a graphics program that you use so thanks for joining me and see you again soon at Polka Doodles bye for now